Charlie, you and I played on her first session. She had a hit on something called Dumb Blonde. Dumb Blonde, right. But she was anything. I you know, met her you I dumb. met her the first day she came to town. Wow. She was at Fred's office. And I went out to visit Tex Davis. Yeah. And Fred called us in his office. He said, come here, I want you guys to hear something. And we went in there and he introduced us to Dolly. And he said, play that song for them he just played for me. She had her guitar with her. And she started singing. And yeah. We, it was like, whoa, this, <laughs> this, is, when she was a this is really special. Huh? This was, I was seeing this was when she was a teenager. What, she must have been 15 at the time? Oh, she was older than that. But 18 or 19, I think. Yeah, yeah, no more than 18. Mm -hmm. Boy, she was really an artist. A chance. I remember work with, we worked with Willie when he wore a suit and tie to the session and had right. short hair. Right. Yeah. Right here in this room. And didn't didn't sing through his nose. Yeah. Really? No. Uh -huh. You're back in the original Willie. Yeah. yeah. So before he became a star. Fact, this was where we, we did him, right here. Yep. I was his first leader in 1961. Really? Liberty. Joe, yeah. Joe Allison, wasn't it? Joe Allison. Yeah, we recorded yeah. with him for Monument and did, well, he was on another label too, wasn't he? <laughs> Three or four others. Oh, every label. Yeah. RCA. Oh, any one he wanted on. Yeah. yeah. Everybody recorded for 20 years. Yeah. Well, was so, he was a good fellow and good to work with. Yeah, boy. Yeah. yeah. And he had the, he had the funniest say back when he had all those first hit records. Uh -huh. Back then, uh, uh, somebody like Charlie or Pig couldn't record with any of them person on another label. Mm -hmm. Wooly recorded with everybody. He says, what the hell are they going to do, fire me? <laughs> you know, he's selling millions of rackets. Ain't nobody going to fire him. Right. <laughs> Ron and Blonde, John Wesley Harding, Nashville Skyline, Self Portrait. Sorry. Those are the four albums he did here. Oh. Yeah. Did you like working with him? Well, it wasn't, it was, it was fine. He just, you know, he just didn't talk to anybody. Mm hard to have a conversation with Actually, you know, won't talk. if truth be known, I should have got the royalties for producing those records. <laughs> because I was a leader and he'd play the song and I'd go to him and ask, what did he think if we did this or that? And he'd always say, I don't know, man, what do you think? <laughs> so then I went to uh, Bob Johnson and I said, Bob, he won't answer me when I'm asking him what he thinks, so I'm just not gonna ask anymore. And Johnson said, well, that sounds like the right thing to do. <laughs> In one day at uh, the Quonset Hut, they cut three million sellers uh, almost back to back. Yep. It was uh, Joe Dow, he cut Wooden Heart. Uh, Leroy Van Dyke, uh, Walk On By. And Ray Stevens, Ahab the A-Rab. Ahab the A-Rab. Yeah. yeah. We three cut, million I sellers. cut two I mean, of them. That, that's really amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> And on those sessions, they probably did two or three other songs. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll, bet, I'll bet they did. <laughs> or else they'd put us in front of the firing squad. Well, not Charlie, then. Charlie was the first guy that I remember introducing me to the musicians. Really? Is that you, the guy who brought Yeah, he's the first one I yeah. saw. Where did you learn? Well, I copied it from the Jordanaires. Really? But I knew what it was when I, when I first saw it. I knew what it was because yeah. I, I was been in music school and... I recognized what it was. But wow. you didn't write it in Roman. I, I didn't write it the way they wrote it. But once I saw what he was doing, I thought, this is better. <laughs> this is better than what I was learning. Right. So, and, I, and I still wasn't thinking much about it until another musician asked me to explain it to him. And it was Wayne Moss on a yeah. session. Because <coughs> you guys were huddled out on the floor. And I was a leader. I went over and said, what are you guys doing? And you said, we're writing it down. And you had a pad about this big. Yeah. Like this, yeah, you know. Yeah. And I thought, you sissies. <laughs> and I, I, I all this time. Then I found out what a good thing it was. Oh, and yeah. I became one of those sissies. <laughs> yeah, I wish Charlie would tell you his first experience when he first came to town, auditioning for my brother. Audition for Chet, too. Yeah, but uh, you pinned his ears back with playing Johnny Be Good over in that little office. Yeah, I went in Owen's little office with a Fender basement amp <laughs> and a big. Gibson Fretless Wonder, and I played saying Johnny Be Good. All right. Wow. I probably played and, pretty loud because <laughs> that's the way we played. And then what happened? Then he said, 
Well, son, I think you're pretty good, but we're not doing that kind of music around here. <laughs> and then what? <laughs> then he invited me to watch these guys cut Brenda Lee's first hit. These old guys. Us yeah. old folks. Yeah, when I walked in, you know, I'm, eight, I'm 18. And when you're 18, everybody looks old. I didn't know I didn't know anything about what was going on here mm -hmm. at the time because mm -hmm. that's my first trip up here and but I've before that after about 30 minutes of the session I knew who they were mm -hmm. and I knew what I knew I wanted to do what they were doing mm -hmm. yeah yeah it was six or seven of us that played together so much that we knew what each other we were going to do yeah, yeah. You know, like Buddy Harvard, I've played a thousand sessions with him. Mm -hmm. And I could tell when he was going to play a push beat, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to ask him. I just knew when he was going to do it. Ha <laughs> ha! 